Hi folks, it's Larry Lapkin with Five Star Insurance Services and welcome to my new blog called Smooth Moves. Smooth Moves is a platform where we're going to be interviewing small household movers. Also, it's intended to be a platform where those that are thinking about getting into this business learn from others. They can share their experiences. So without further ado, enjoy the show. And if you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. One of my favorite clients is is online with me today. It's Julius Austin. Uh, Julius is out of uh, Detroit, Michigan. And the name of your business is? JCA Moving. JCA Moving. Forgive me. I should yes. know that. You're a client. No, it's good. Okay. It's good. But, JCA. Uh, anyway, uh, Julius, you've been in business for how many years now? Uh, so I've been I've been uh, in business. I've been in the moving industry for about twelve years. Uh, we've been we've been operating as a uh, as a labor only company for about about uh, a little over two years now uh, under JCA Moving as a labor only company. Uh, we started out as full service and just kind of transitioned into uh, the labor only sector. And uh, it's been working out pretty well. Working yeah. out pretty well. Sounds like business has been has been good for you. Um, it's been pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. 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 I mean, you you're you seem to have a, a a very nice you know attitude about the business and yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously a great personality. Um, your business is a uh, is it kind of a is it a partnership or is it just you? It's just me, so it's, it's it's LLC. Um, LLC, okay. Uh, I am married, so you know, so you know, of course, my <laughs> wife is, you know, involved uh, because you know how that works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me, so, let me. so 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 it's a it's a, it's a family business. I could, I would consider it a family business. That's what I would consider. Very. Um, all right. What sort of startup costs does the, the, somebody wanting to get into this business? Uh, what what do you think they're looking at? So so a couple of things. Um, and, and again, and, and I'll speak to both because I've done both. Um, so I'll, I'll start with full service. So I got into full service. Full service um, meaning you had a truck and, uh, and the whole thing. Right, correct. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So, when, so okay. we say full service moving, we're talking um, you're going to get at least two guys to show up, uh, a truck. Um, and they're going to load the items in the truck, drive the items to your new location, unload, unload the items at your uh, new location. Um, if you're looking to do that, uh, the way I got in, um, I had a pickup truck. It's a funny story. I had a pickup truck. Um, I was working somewhere, and I really didn't like it. And I uh, was making decent money, just, you know, it's time to do something different. And people were always asking me to pick up stuff. Can you drop this here? Can you move this here? Can you move this here? And, you know, when they're, when it's a favor, they don't necessarily want to pay you. So I just made a business, and then they kind of felt like they had to pay after that. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, excellent. You know, you mentioned so, uh, the labor only idea. Yeah, versus, absolutely. So, yeah. So the way I so so what we did, we used to uh, we basically got a rental agreement for trucks with budget, and we would rent trucks to move items. So what what ended up happening is we uh, I just did a little bit of research, found a couple companies that. Uh, that did the labor only services kind of looked into it and it just my 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 overhead wasn't as high um liability wasn't as high because i'm not having to transport the items and so you know when you're talking startup costs with that uh basically your startup cost is going to be you know your insurance your liability insurance um of course you need moving dollies um uh, sometimes you need moving pads uh and ratchet straps and things like that uh, a lot of times for the for those items though, because the majority of the folks that we move are moving uh, long distance, uh, most times they're able to actually purchase those items. So what ends up happening is we actually have those items on hand, but most times the customer ends up purchasing those items from us. Um, so really, your 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 dollies, your insurance. Um, of course, you have to have a, a decent sized vehicle because um, like if you got a Ford Taurus. You can't put three guys in a dolly and a bunch of dollies in a Ford tour. So you need at least a minivan. Um, I'm I'm a, more of an SUV guy. Um, so you know SUV, um, something that can hold a, at least four people, four decent sized people, uh, because we do jobs that 
you know, sometimes we require up to, you know, four or five guys. So, so um, you're, you're really, your vehicle is more for transporting your, your workers, your helpers, and right. a little and bit equipment. of equipment, but yep. not actually the goods themselves. You're not. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, not the goods themselves. All yep. right. And from my perspective, from the insurance side, I totally agree with you. Um, I get, I, I insure both types of businesses, the labor only and the full service as, as you call it. And the, the amount of paperwork and legal document, legal licenses and whatnot that you need to get to, to become a full service mover is, is pretty astounding, really. Um, it's a lot. It's a yeah, lot. I mean, yeah. so when you're going that route, you're talking Department of Transportation, especially if you want to go like long distance, right. you're talking Department of Transportation on the state level and the federal level. You're talking, um, you know, if you're going long distance, you, you tolls and you got to log your hours of driving. And it's it's definitely a lot, a lot yeah. more cumbersome. Well, you got to be making a lot more money because you got you got. In addition, <laughs> now you own a truck or you're leasing a truck. You got to yeah, have I'm leasing a truck. Big, big limits, big automobile liability limits for that truck. Right. You have to not only for then you have to insure the the truck itself. In addition to the liability, you've got Form E, Form F for the department, right. the DOT numbers, MC numbers, right. all that kind of stuff. It's yeah, that's, uh, and that's it, just that we're not we haven't even got into truck repairs. Where are you going to store the truck? Can't park it on the street. Yeah. Got to pay for storage. Yeah. Good so point. you got <laughs> you got point. a whole lot of other things yeah. that you're paying for. You know. Yeah. So you're talking. You know, maybe anywhere from a thousand to you know a couple grand in ex monthly expenses versus a fraction of that going the other route. Exactly. Exactly. And I I will say that I don't know. I probably have close to a hundred clients that I insure like you. I don't know. Maybe not quite that many, but close to that. And uh, they're all around the country, and I and m some of the most successful ones don't own a truck. No, they're just they've got the same business model that you have. <clears throat> Call it labor only, if you like. And, yeah. Uh, and it's it's worked out really well. In fact, I've had some that have got, done the same thing that you did. They started with a truck, and they just finally said, "Screw it, I don't need this." You know. No. Uh, no. So uh, anyway, we try to tell it like it is here. Uh, so, all right. So the next question, um, what's, what's a typical job look like for you or a typical week? How many jobs in a week do you think you might be doing? And obviously it's winter time where you are still. Yeah. So it's winter time here. Um, uh, again, we're in Michigan. Uh, so we've, we've seen everything from ice storms to snowstorms to, you know, all, all kind of stuff. Um, but you know, a typical week, I mean, we're pretty much running every day. Uh, in the winter time, it slows down a little bit, uh, but it offsets in the summer because it's you know, if it's if it's you know, we we, we don't we don't work on Sundays. We're closed on Sundays, but we work Monday through Saturday, okay. and there are weeks you know that we may do ten to fifteen jobs in one week wow. uh, in the summertime. Um, and of course, that varies. You know, some some weeks we're doing we average at minimum a job a day though. So are these jobs? Um... Well, let's let's take let's back backtrack a minute. Sure. Where, where, where do you get your business from? Is it is are you advertising? So, is it all through referrals? Uh, how right. So work? we're so we're actually a third party contractor um, f with a company, and we load uh, pods, we load pack rat, we load uh, with Old Dominion um, freight, uh, and we load with uh, ABF freight. And when we say freight, we're talking freight moving. Uh, which basically is a more cost efficient way for folks to move things uh, cross country. So, for example, um, ABF, they have 26 foot trailers and you let's say, Larry, you got a one bedroom apartment where you're only gonna, probably going to need about 10 feet of that trailer. Um, it would be a lot more cost efficient for you to rent 10 feet of that trailer, pay us to load it, pay somebody to unload it on the other end than to pay one of the larger moving companies to move your things across country. You're going to save a couple thousand dollars right. um, going that route. And the reason you're saving that money is because it's it's similar to ride sharing. So when I think of ABF Freight for these companies, I, I think of, I compare that to like an Uber or a Lyft because what it is is you're going to or like, uh, what do they call Uber Poop, where it's multiple people. Uh, because what happens is you get 10 feet 
and then they're able to um, ship some other items in the other 16 feet. So they're not in, they're they're not incurring the entire cost of that load. You're basically paying for a portion of the load. So the the truck shows up at the customer's home. That's where you that's where you jump in. Is that correct? Correct. So they so they, so so the, so they 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 bring the uh, the tractor trailer. Um, like I said, it's usually around 26 feet. The truck is going to drop it off, and it's just on site. It sits there. We load. We get there. We load the customer stuff, and then either that day or the following day, a truck comes and scoops it up, takes it to its destination where it needs to go. By the way, we're talking with Julius Austin from JCA Moving in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Julius is one of my favorite clients. He's been with me for uh, well, we're going on three years now. So yeah, going on three uh, years now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I always enjoy talking to Julius because he's always so upbeat and has a really positive attitude, and he works this as it's as it should be. It's his job. It's his full time business. If you're going to get into this business, don't do it part time because you're going to probably do a half ass job. I I don't know what. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You will. You will. You have to. It's it's. It, it, it makes a difference, man. When it's when it's paying your bills, uh, you treat it uh, you treat it a lot better. Right. I'll say that. I I totally yeah. agree. With you. Speaking of that, obviously one of the things that that we we all need to talk about. You know, what what happens when things don't go necessarily as planned? In other words, yeah. The, yeah. I think one of the yeah. biggest exposures you guys have is uh, dealing with the you know, goods that get damaged, you yeah. know, whether you drop the TV or you break the bed frame or, you know, sure. uh, even though you're not transporting the goods in your case, you still have that exposure for, you know, the final mile, I guess you could call it from the truck to the home or vice versa. You know, you're sure. um, loading and unloading of the good. Obviously, most of your vendors uh, require you to carry uh, commercial liability insurance. And a lot of my clients that have trucks uh, have actually have cargo insurance, which is a whole nother story. Uh, right. Cargo insurance is not is not inexpensive. Commercial liability insurance is fairly affordable, actually. Anyway, how do you deal with with those situations? In my case, we're trying to keep claims down to a minimum so that we can continue to offer this kind of insurance. Because if there's all kinds of claims, the insurance carriers are going to say, hey, we don't need this shit, you know. Or the cost is going to go up. <laughs> To pull the plug on it. I'll 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 answer it two ways. So one, you you per, you you definitely right as it, as it relates to the liability, um, not transporting the items. I mean, you're you probably killing you probably knocking your liability down about seventy five percent because most of the damage you're going to get is going to be in transit damage uh, when it comes to moving. It's, it's stuff that's damaged during transit, uh, whether it's you know could be from not packed properly to Depends on who's driving that truck. You know how it goes, buddy. You know how, how fast are they driving through those hills yep. and mountains. And then keep in mind, the majority of the stuff that we move is cross country. So, you know, stuff is it's going up the hills, it's going through mountains, it's going all kind of all kind of ways. Um, fortunately for us, we don't really have a lot of issues with damage, partially because we, um, I, I try to do a pretty good do- job of training. Um, I do have a field manager, so I have another guy that works under me who kind of helps train guys and kind of works with guys as well. Um, and he's been working with me for some years now. And we really try to kind of create a culture of um, taking, you know, our slogan is we treat your valuables as our own. So we try to treat the stuff like it's our own stuff. Um, we're extremely meticulous when it comes to, you know, the way we carry items, the way we wrap items, the way we prep items. Um, but for me, <clears throat> the job starts when I when I'm on the phone with a customer, and kind of having that customer prepared on the front end. So, for example, if we're loading items, so if we're taking items from a customer's home, loading it into a truck, trailer, or, or a pod, um, having that conversation with the customer on the front end eliminates a lot of issues. And God forbid something does break. I so mean- if, it, if it if 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 something does break. Uh, you know, it, it's like anything else. It just depends on the cost of it. If it's under what our deductible is, I'll just resolve it with the customer directly. If it's over that, um, then, you know, we will have to make a claim. Fortunately, we haven't had to make any claims. I'm knocking on every piece of wood I can find. 
Well, fortunately, we haven't had to. Had All right, to let me you bring up a good point. So let just I'm the insurance guy. Here's here's, sure. here's the way it works from my side, just so you know. And I I, I want to be very clear on this because every time I get a new client, I make sure they understand that commercial liability insurance covers bodily injury to others or somebody just walking down the street, you know, they trip over a box or something. Yeah. Um, so that's bodily injury. The other thing it covers is property damage. I'm not talking about the goods that you're transporting, damage to maybe the customer's home. Like a wall. Yes, sir. Yes. Things like that. A wall, the floor, you break a window, you damage the stairs, you break the elevator in the apartment building or, you know, some some something like that. Those sure. things are typically covered. Um, sometimes there is a deductible, but it's the other stuff, you know, the goods themselves got to be very clear that that coverage is not contemplated. And that's the word we use in the insurance business. It's not contemplated okay. on, on the policy. Okay. <laughs> I actually have my clients uh, yeah. sign off on that to make sure you understand. Some of them seem to have a short memory, though. One of the reasons why we're having these these webinars is just to remind you, hey, this is what's covered. This is today. Yeah. Julius, we're, we're, we're running a little short on time. What advice sure. would you give to people that are thinking about getting, getting into this business? I'm going to tell you. So uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since I was a child. I... In elementary, middle school, and high school, I sold juice boxes to kids it would, and would bribe the teacher with, you know, I would buy her, get her a big bag of chips just so she would let me sell sell my stuff in her class. So I've been an entrepreneur. I've sold everything from juice boxes to women's shoes. Um, and I can tell you, one, it's, it's got you really got to want to do it. I mean, entrepreneurship is very hard. Being in business is very, very tough. Um, it's, I mean, most businesses fail in the first five years. That's for a reason. It's hard. It's extremely difficult. And, uh, if you're not prepared mentally, mentally and financially to do that, um, this is probably not, this is probably not for you. I would just start with that. Uh, and as it relates to specifically to the movement industry, um, be meticulous, take your time, um, try to treat every customer's stuff like it's your own stuff. Um, and treat every job like all the other jobs in the future are depending on this job. Um, if you do that early on, I think that'll definitely be helpful um, and definitely be fruitful. Uh, don't take any job for granted um, because every job um, could turn into something else, could get to a refer. You, you never know who you're working for. I mean, we've done jobs for folks um, on the residential side and they're the superintendent of a school district. And next thing you know, we have a contract with a school district. So you never know who you're dealing with. So you want to treat every job with respect. You want to treat every person with respect. Um, and again, you want to take your time and try to be as meticulous as possible um, to, to be successful. We've been speaking with Julius Austin from JCA Moving in Detroit, Michigan. Julius, it's great pleasure to finally meet you in person. It's been a couple years. Yeah. I'm very impressed, man. Uh, you, you, I, I really enjoyed it, and uh, thank you for joining us today. And in the future, I hope to have more of these webinars. We're going to be interviewing a few a few other clients over the upcoming weeks, so stay tuned for that. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and we'll keep doing these more often. Julius, thanks again, my friend. It's and, been a pleasure. Uh, I'll talk to you on the rebound, okay? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for everybody. Have a good day.